In this tutorial, we're going to be covering several JavaScript concepts as we are doing a bit of deciphering of some JavaScript code. We're going to be looking at a recursive function and explaining why its results are what they are. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript. As always, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And remember to check out the discount links to all my courses in the description. I just released a brand new course titled JavaScript, the Critical Parts Masterclass. I have provided a link in the description that includes a discount if you'd like to take advantage of that. You can view my other courses on my website. And if you'd like to support the channel, I have a Patreon link. So let's get into this. The code we are examining comes from a question posted by a viewer in YouTube. The question was simple. Why does this code do what it does? Sometimes deciphering code like this is the best way to learn some of the nuances in JavaScript. So let's take a look at the code. This is the code here. Simple function. It's called inside from inside a console.log statement. Now, this is the type of thing that would be presented to test your understanding of JavaScript. It probably, I'm pretty sure, not written to solve a particular problem, mainly to test knowledge of JavaScript. Now, first and foremost, it should be seen that this is a recursive function. It's invoked here, this is the name of the function up here, and it's invoked from inside the function. And basically, that's what a recursive function is. It's a function that calls itself. Now, if this is something that's new to you, I'll link to a tutorial on recursion, and you can review that concept if necessary. To figure out what is returned requires some knowledge of the call stack, the scope, recursion, and a few other concepts. So let's take a look at those concepts first. Perhaps what I should do is just show you what is returned. So if we jump out here and take a look at the console, I'm just going to refresh really quick so we can see basically what gets returned is one array. And that array contains one, two, three, four, and five. So it's a single array that gets returned. But as we look at this, this function is called multiple times. And so that's the first thing that can sometimes confuse people. So let me mark how this is, where it's actually invoked. So here is the first place that it is invoked. It's inside of this console log statement. And then if n is less than one, it returns an empty array. Otherwise it comes down here and it declares the variable count array and it invokes it again. And so I'm going to call this B. All right. Now, after invoking it, once that has run, it will then push onto what is returned from the, the calling of that function. What is returned there? It pushes onto that the number N. So whatever value is passed in to count up. And then finally, it returns count array. Okay, so it returns what is in this variable. All right. So here we have where it's invoked. Now, as I mentioned, one of the ways to understand this is by looking at the call stack. And so what I want to do down below this is I just want to write out as the call stack is called. Now, Here's my call stack here. And an important thing to remember about the call stack is it's last in, first out. So the call stack keeps track of every function that is called, all the code that is running, and it runs it in order. This is where JavaScript is synchronous. And so it's running it in order. The last thing in the call stack is always the first thing out. So that's the important thing to remember. So now let's go and look ahead and look at the call stack and how it fills up. So first, we have a call to count up here. That's what starts the whole thing. Now, the first thing on the call stack is really the console.log. Let me comment this. There we go. It's really the console.log. That's the first thing that's placed on the call stack. But before that can finish, there is an invocation of count up. 
and the number five is passed in. So that's the next thing added to the call stack. Notice how I'm doing this. Last in is coming on top of everything, that's the first out. So the thing that's on the top of the call stack is the thing that's going to be resolved first. And so now we have from A1, from A here, we have count up invoked. And when it's invoked, n is equal to five. We can see that right there. So we come up to our function. It checks n, n is not less than one, so it comes down to our else. Declares the count array variable, and then what does it do? It invokes count up again. So this is not done, this is not done. We're now adding something else to the call stack. So let me go ahead and put that down. This, let's call this b1 count up is invoked. And what is n equal to? Well, five was passed in when this was called. So n minus one would be four. So n equals four, all right? So at that point, this is kind of a critical juncture here. At that point, do we finish doing this? No, no we don't. Another function has been called. It's the same function, but as the call stack is concerned, it's another function. And that function has been invoked. And so now it starts running, the call stack here starts running this count up invocation. And four, four is not less than one. We come down again, declares count array for this invocation. These are all different functions, remember that. It's the same code, but it's invoked multiple times. So it declares the count array variable, and then it invokes it again. So once again, this is not finished down here because another function has been invoked and it's going to continue with that. So let me put that on the call stack. So here we go, b2 count up is invoked. Now this time n is equal to three. See how we're doing that? It gets passed in, n minus one, it's less, all right? And then it goes through that same thing again. So b3 count up n is equal to two. And so that's called with two, it's not less than one, comes down here again. So b4, whoops. Count up is invoked and n is equal to one. So that's invoked, n is equal to one. Is it less than one? No, it comes down here and count up is called again, this time with zero. And so that gets added to the call stack. This is fifth time invoked from the B position here. So I'm calling it B5 and this time n is equal to zero. All right. Now here's where things start to begin to unwind, all right? So let's take a look at that. So this invocation here is the one that's current, the call stack is currently running. And so zero is in the variable n, all right? That's what the variable n has at this point, all right? So zero is less than one. So what happens? It returns an empty array, all right? So that means, since this function is returning, that means this function is done. This one's done from the call stack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to indent it a bit to indicate that it's completed. All right, so that one's completed. And when it's done, basically what gets returned is an empty array. And where is it being returned to? Well, it was invoked by this function here, this call here. So it's getting returned to the count array variable of this, okay? So I'm going to indicate that as well, to count array in B4, all right? So B4 is down here. So now this one's done. And so now the call stack can resume this invocation here and it resumes at this point. This is where we left it, is when we called additional functions. So it resumes at this point, what does it get returned? An empty array. 
So the count array now has an empty array. And what does it get pushed on? A number one. So we push a number one onto count array. And then that gets returned. Now because this is returning, that means this function is complete. So I'm going to indent that one. And when this one was done, whoops, it returns this array because we pushed one onto it. And where does it return it to? Count array of in B3. Okay, so see how we're now unwinding this, this recursive function, we're now unwinding it. So that one's done. So now the call stack can resume with this. And it's going to resume at this point because this is where it left it, where it invoked this. And what does it get back? Well, it gets an array with the number one in it. And then what do we do? We push n onto that. What is n equal to inside of this function? Well, it's equal to two. Now remember, n is scoped to the function. So n is not changing with these different function calls. It's scoped to each function, all right? So if that's confusing you a bit, just remember that it's scoped to the function. Count array here, this is scoped to this block because it's declared with const. So this block right here, that's what it's scoped to. But anyway, n is equal to two, so it's going to push two onto count array. What happens when something is pushed onto an array? It gets placed at the end of it. So now we have an array with one and two, and then we return it. Because we return it, this one is done. It's removed from the call stack. And when it's done, what did it return? It returned this to count array, like that, in B2. All right? So now you're seeing how this is unwinding. And so it continues with this invocation here. The array 1 and 2 is returned here. We push 3 onto it, and then it returns that. So now this one is done. And basically you're getting the pattern here. Now we have this as the array that's returned. N is equal to four. At that point, it pushes four onto it and then it returns that. So this one is now done. I'm typing this out because I think it helps you to understand what is going on. And where does it return it to? To the count array variable in A1. So the one that was invoked down here. So now it's got to finish that out. It's right here inside of this invocation. And we have one, two, three, four. And at that point, n is equal to five. So we push five onto that and then we turn return the array again. So now when this is done, it returns one, two, three, four, five. And where does it return it to? To console.log. And then console.log is the last thing the call stack has to finish. And basically what it does is log to the console this array, which is exactly what we saw. All right. And when the console.log is finished, then the call stack is empty. It doesn't have to deal with anything else at that point. All right. So that is how this is working. Now, push when we push something onto the array, it's putting it at the end of the array. If we wanted to put something at the front of the array, it would basically reverse this. We would use unshift. So that's another concept that's a part of this that I wanted to explain. So really, we're de dealing with the call stack. We're dealing with scope. This is scoped to the function. Count array is scoped to that block because it's declared with const. The way recursion uses the call stack and the way it unwinds, which I've tried to illustrate here, these are all the things which we're dealing with in this sample code. So hopefully that was helpful to explain. All right, please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember to discount links to all my courses in the description section, especially that brand new course that I've just released. 
Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release new tutorials as often as I can. And thanks for watching.